1947, one of the greatest archaeological finds in history was located in the caves of Qumran, Israel, on the Dead Sea. This area proves the relocation of the exiled temple priests, the sons of Zadok, the Levites ordained and anointed to teach and keep the biblical canon of Scripture. Any scholar telling you they were Essenes is either illiterate or a liar. No one else, including the Pharisees, had such authority in that age to keep Scripture. There is no other find in history like it. Though the rabbis continue the new fraudulent name of Qumran, this is the biblical Bethabara, even according to Joshua and abundant maps from the oldest to 1901 even. This is critical because this is where John the Baptist lived and operated where Yahusha launched his ministry and was baptized, placing his endorsement on this community, where the temple practice was now continued, no longer Jerusalem, and Bible canon was kept. He is the Word, and that matters. Yet he did not do so in Jerusalem at the temple because it was defiled by Hasmoneans and Pharisees, and no longer kept the canon of Scripture, but changed it. Many follow this Pharisee canon today for the Old Testament, assuming it to be the Bible, even calling some Bible canon Apocrypha, meaning books outside of the Pharisee canon, a useless term. However, it is missing books from the true Bible library where the temple priests were exiled in Qumran Bethabara. We know because this has been found in archaeology and their writings are clear. In this library, we have a time capsule that sets a solid foundation in the desire to determine just what books are and are not Bible canon in history. No Pharisee offers such, including Josephus, the Pharisee, Hasmonean, and Essene trained even by his own admission, nor the Egyptian Septuagint, as neither are from the temple priests, the only ordained to keep Bible canon. However, many out there today seize on these non-biblical canons from those not authoritative in any sense, but defined by Messiah as the enemy. Others today lose this foundation and begin to accept any book which looks like it could be Bible with little research, and that is a mistake. To start, they must ask, was it in the Bible canon of the temple priests, the only historic library of those ordained by Scripture to keep Torah and the rest of the Bible at that time? One such book is the Book of Modern Jasher, a modern book claiming to cover the error of the Old Testament in which Moses wrote, essentially, another book of Torah. Is it? The books of Joshua and Samuel do quote from a written book in their days that was called by both the Book of Yashar in Hebrew or Jasher. The modern Jasher is already problematic because it continues into Joshua's days proving it was not what Joshua quoted as really Torah, which preceded 
him. One of many such proofs that we will discuss. However, today, there is a modern book of Jasher which purports to be that Yasher of the Bible, the book of the right or the righteous or the just. Another way, really, to say Torah. We have heard this from many, yet none seem to offer a test of this book, nor have they bothered to consider if it is not this modern Jasher, which disappears from all of history when you bet it, except since the 1200s or so, even a fragment for that matter, never found, especially in the temple library. If not, then what is it? Is there a book that is historical canon, even Torah, from which these two patriarchs were quoting instead? One with many titles, even perhaps? Can we find specifically this book of Yashar in the Qumran Bethabara Library from the Dead Sea? Well, the modern Jasher is not found there. It's not found anywhere, not even a fragment, until the 1200s or so. So that is not Bible canon, nor could it be. It's time to identify the Bible's book of Yashar, Jasher, because we, in fact, do find it in the temple library. And it is called by many names, but we know this missing piece today as the Book of Jubilees. Wait till you see how this ties and comes together, and then we test the modern Jasher, uncovering tons of occult infusions to Jubilees and Genesis' accounts, as well as, oddly, adding Joshua which doesn't belong in that book. Not just 10 or 50, but more than 100 that we have found in reading that book. This occult lie is going down, and the true book of Yashar restored starting now. Are you ready? Now for the heart of the matter. Is the modern book of Jasher, or Yashar, of the Bible, mentioned in Samuel as well as Joshua, we covered. Last video gave it a powerful blow, from which it's, well, already TKO on the floor. But this one will settle this even more so, and really for good. And the next four videos, which really rip through the content, oh wow, You're never going to want to read this book. If the modern Jasher is scripture quoted by Joshua in Samuel, then very simply put, it must have historicity as Torah, frankly. It must be. Again, we covered the word Yashar, right, just, the book of right, really, must be Torah, because that's the same thing, or book of law and the book of Moses. Is the modern Jasher capable of producing such Historicity? In fact, can it even go into the B.C. era for that matter? Uh, well, we'll show you. What about the Book of Jubilees, however? Well, we proved last video it's the true origin of these two references, and this will prove this further. Is it really Torah? Then we cover this in our introduction of this book, the Book of Jubilees, the Torah calendar, available at bookofjubilees.org, free in ebook, or you can purchase it in print. That's up to you. Um, But we do that there in great detail. But we're going to touch on that here. So let's do this. A head-to-head comparison. Which vets as Torah and which proves a fraud? It's time. The last episode already proved the true book of Yashar being referenced in 1 Samuel, or 2 Samuel, sorry, and Joshua is the book of Jubilees. We also saw Jacob, right before he died, promise the tribute he had gotten from the Amorites he defeated. Wait a minute, 
That's a story not found in Genesis. Yet referenced in Genesis, it's there, but the story is not. But the bounty is. So where did they come from? Specifically, from the book of Jubilees. Jacob is affirming the story Moses placed in Jubilees, and that is indisputable. Moses' Genesis is literally quoting Moses' Jubilees, which had to be written at the same time, both Torah. Most certainly not, as many view illiterate, downright stupid scholars, really, assert a Pharisee wrote Jubilees around 150 B.C. That's the dumbest thing, and fails every test right away. And I know you'll go on, you'll read a blog online, and say, oh, well, such and such a doctor said. He doesn't know what he's talking about. We do. We've tested this thoroughly. Neither of these two claims stands for the modern Jasher, however, and this video will demonstrate why. Historicity is a major problem for this book. It is not for Jubilees, which passes all such tests. Wow. But wait, could this modern Jasher have been written by Moses? Well, no. <laughs> not even remotely, nor does anyone claim so. Written before Joshua? No. No case can coherently be made, period. It is more than a massive leap. It is a complete fraud, requiring more faith than any of us should have <laughs> in any such thing. So let's look at the historicity here, beginning with Jubilees, and we will then compare the modern Jasher. And let's see who comes out on top. Let's go to the temple priest. In the Dead Sea Scroll writings of the temple priest in their local Damascus document, so they wrote it, it's not scripture, this document's not scripture, but the referencing scripture, nevertheless. The sons of Zadok, the biblical keepers of scripture, define for us Torah. And check this out. Let's read their words translated into English, of course, by Giza Verms, but it's a good translation. For Elohim made a covenant with you and all Israel. Therefore, a man shall bind himself by oath to return to the law of Moses. Well, how do you do that? Well, they're going to tell you. Wait till you see how. For in it, all things are strictly defined. Hmm. Okay, so they're going to tell us how they keep Torah, especially in times. That's what they're going to say. Remember that the Torah calendar, which is why we subtitled this book, so is what Jubilees is called, and here is why. As for the exact determination, did you just read that language? Exact determination. Of their times. So, times of what? The times of the law of Moses, that's what it's talking about. What's that? That's the Sabbath, that's the feast, etc. How to determine them such as the feasts, right? The jubilees, the Sabbaths of years, every seven years, all of that. Where is it found? Well, I'll keep reading. To which Israel turns a blind eye? Well, so wait, who runs the temple and the religion of Israel at this point in around the, you know, 100 BC uh, era? Well, the Pharisees, not the temple priests, as this Right here in Qumran Bethabara is their place of exile. And here's what they're writing. So, Israel is not minding whatever this is that they're going to be, be discussing. What is it? Behold, it is strictly defined. And that's what they said before, strictly defined. The law of Moses is strictly defined. And now they're saying it, the law of Moses, is strictly defined in the book of the divisions of the times into their jubilees and weeks. That's the full, long title of the book of jubilees, my friends. And it is Torah. The book of right, righteous, just, part of Torah, according to the temple priests who just told you as well that it was. It was written by Moses because they just told you it was. Boom. Can the modern Jasher say that? Not even remotely. 
See, the temple priests in Qumran Bethabar, I'm just going to go through this real quick, were very clear that Jubilees was equated and used as Torah. That's what they just said. We showed you their words, those, those words. Uh, we didn't write that. They did. Uh, along with the other five books that we know as Torah or law. This is consistent with the word Yashar, right? Upright, just, law, Torah, same we know that Joshua and Samuel were speaking of Torah, Yashar, which is Jubilees, in these two instances, and its stories match. Those are not found in Genesis, and modern Jasher will fail any test of historicity that you'll, you'll ever try, I mean, you'll see. They did not view Moses as writing separate books, though, understand, and this is what we want to show you here, they viewed all of these, what we call Torah, appropriately, and that's really how we view it today, too, but they viewed it all as the book of Moses, one book, even though it's got, you know, really six, but it's singular, not plural. They call it the book of Moses several times within the Dead Sea Scrolls. That's how they viewed it. Anything written by Moses is Torah. Okay, the book of Moses is Torah, it's the same. And really, Yashar, even. However, Jubilees fits these quotes. These two Dead Sea Scrolls references of the book of Moses are to Deuteronomy. And we'll explore one more here. And this one is to Exodus. There's really only one book of Moses in their mindset, though broken into six, really not five. Uh, there's never a scripture anywhere, by the way, that references Moses having five books. doesn't exist. There is no such thing as a Pentateuch. That is a made-up Pharisee term, just as Apocrypha is. Both are meaningless and have no value whatsoever. That is Pharisee, not Bible, and Moses wrote six books. But let's not just stop there, because Jubilees was Torah, in the time of Moses, the time of Joshua, who quoted it, and Samuel, and Jacob in Genesis, Moses writing in Genesis, the Dead Sea Scroll dating for the Book of Jubilees itself, which was the sixth most found scroll there in their library. You know, the one of the sons of Zadok, the temple priests, who were not Essenes, that is illiterate. So, that was 150 B.C. in date for a copy, not an original, and anyone that knows how Bible scrolls work know very well that the scribes copied them over, over time. Therefore, you find a copy, it is not an original, ever, really. I mean, the chances of finding an original Bible text from the days of Moses are zero. You're not going to find one. That wasn't the custom. They copied them over, but they're affirmed throughout history, throughout time, and it's there. That date is not actually scientific either, uh, so it very well could even be far earlier, but nevertheless, that would be a copy. Jubilees was written in the days of Moses by Moses. How do we know? Well, we already know it's quoted in Genesis and Joshua and Samuel as Torah. Done. This Damascus document endorsement of Jubilees in use as Torah dates about 100 BC. In the first century, we prove in the introduction of this book, Messiah and the Apostles, quote, the book of Jubilees for significant doctrine that is specific to the book of Jubilees doesn't derive from Genesis. And that is epic indeed. It's Almost as if Moses did that on purpose. Hmm. Yeah, he was that smart. Now, you will find the Book of Jubilees in continued use throughout history. It has been Bible canon, uh, especially in Ethiopia all along, at least 300 AD, their first church, basically, uh, uh, to present. It's still there in their Bible canon. And it is quoted by early church fathers, even popes, from 150 A.D. all the way through to at least the 1300s, even in the West. Who, yeah, lost it for a time, but it wasn't lost. Ethiopia continued it as canon. Now, that's called historicity, and that's how such a book should look. 
Modern Jasher has a very laughable nothing. But let's see in the very words of the author himself. But what about Jasher? Well, let's look at the words of the publisher. He's, I called him the author uh, a minute ago, but he's not really the author of the book uh, necessarily. Uh, in the front of this book, though, he has his commentary or whatever you want to call it, trying to explain and sort of test the book, which is not a test at all. It's ridiculous. But what does he say? Well, let's read. The Authentic Annals of the Early Hebrews. Is it the real book of Jasher, Yeshar? It is understandable that some may feel that it is impossible or unlikely that this volume could really be the original book of Jasher. Well, it's not a feeling. <laughs> it's about proof. You don't provide any. That's your problem. So watch how he muddies the waters here uh, and even admits this is a Pharisee concoction, essentially, though he won't come out and say it. This issue is compounded by the existence of several works by the same or by the name Sephir Hayashur. Okay, I have in my possession a copy of the Sephir Hayashur, the book of the righteous, edited and translated by Seymour J. Cohen. It is clearly not a book of history, but an ethical text. No, sir, it is an unethical fraud. We prove it. That was probably written in the 13th century, so the 1200s, essentially. That's pretty late to be claiming that it's scripture. Is that the time of the Bible? Well, no, it's long after, more than a thousand years, so come on. Does he really not know that? Well, he doesn't care because he's a Pharisee, and Pharisees don't care about time of such. They just want to make their claims and peddle their leaven and deceive the goyim because that is a Talmudic aim, and that is an expressed goal of the Talmud. We should all know that. Keep reading. Its introduction cites several other books of Jasher. Well, that's even weirder. Uh, seems like the Pharisees are obsessed with this concoction, in fact. Hmm, I wonder why. Some of which are no longer known to be in existence. Well, because they were frauds. But what time frame? Well, even later. This is ridiculous. To make such a claim to the 13th century, the 1200s, and try to, you know, mix that in as scripture is, I mean, how dumb can you be? Such as that by Zerahiah ha Yevani of the 13th century, a Pharisee. There is also known to have been one written by Rabbi Jacob ben Mir of the 12th century. Oh, well, there you go. There, it's even 100 years earlier. Oh, wait, he's a Pharisee. And that's way too late. And one by Rabbi Jonah ben Abraham of Gerona of the 14th century, oh, a Pharisee. We are told of a work by that title from the Amoraeum uh, period, uh, 3rd to 6th centuries. Really? Are we? Also by Pharisees. <laughs> still too late. Even though that sounds like an early period, that's still too late for Scripture. No, doesn't work. This is all the way back to the time of Moses. Not the 3rd to 6th centuries A.D., come on! That is characterized as containing, for the most part, sayings of the sages. Ding, 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 ding! Pharisees. Talmud. That's what that would be. Of the 1st and 2nd centuries, okay, so maybe it's pre-Talmud, because I know someone will probably argue that, uh, but whatever you want to call it, it's Pharisee crap. Still too late to be part of the Bible, especially writing of the era of Jacob. Are you kidding? How can we not know that, right? And by an unknown author, even? Not a prophet? Come on. This is ridiculous. That's not scripture. So this title has been a popular one for rabbinic writings. Well, that's just nice that it's a popular title. But what it is not is scripture. Nor does he prove that. He rambles on here. He goes on. He tells you about some Pharisees, you know, who like this title and wrote a book by it. It's great. It's just wonderful. 
None of that has historicity. This is not historicity. The Pharisees love it, which means, well, it's not scripture. It would be the opposite of it. What part of Mark 7, 9 can we not understand when Messiah says, even in his time, they were turning Torah against Torah into the opposite? That hasn't changed. But most are clearly not intended to have been passed off as the book mentioned in the Bible. Okay, uh, and you know what? That's, that's nice to hear, but why write it then? I, why write it? We have the Bible. We have Torah. These are the stories from that time. So if they're not Torah, then they're frauds, they're fabrications. And that's what he's admitting here. Really because none are, and this makes them admitted frauds, really. So let's be clear here. There is one notable exception, which I will mention later, and that's going to be Josephus, uh, and we're going to cover that, so don't worry. Uh, He'll, of course, say this copy is not a fraud, just those others, right? But it seems the Pharisees are obsessed with frauding this book of Yasher. Why? Because they exploit the gap left by the censorship of the true book of Yashar, which is Jubilees, and in claim of a new book that never existed. That's what they're doing, and they're caught. There are digressions from the biblical narrative that show concurrent events in other parts of the world. What? In the era of Moses? Really? Now that is a load of crap. Yet, he's telling the truth there. And we're going to cover some of those along the way uh, when we go through the content in the next videos. There are chapters dealing wholly with events in Egypt that are not Bible, is what he's saying, or events in Europe. Huh? Europe? Is that in Torah? This is ridiculous. This is just plain, downright dumb. And there's no other way to look at it. Wait till you see the added occult events and elements, especially those of Egypt, in really, just, I mean, right there, I mean, even Osiris is invoked. Ridiculous. Next video, we'll cover that in the next four. Much of this material can be recognized from other works of ancient history. Well, that that actually could be a problem because it means that they were frauding the book, borrowing from other historic accounts, and inserting them even once later than the book, which they do. That broadcast, this is a rework of what? Well, of Jubilees and Genesis especially, which are both mixed in with other historic events, and this is a complete fraud. This book has no value, and this publisher actually admits it, whether he knows it or not. But see, in his Pharisee world, well, it's okay to manufacture a book and call it scripture. They even accuse the temple priests of doing that in Qumran because that is a, an accepted practice for them. But the temple priests, they never did that. They didn't write fake writings. They didn't sign their name as a prophet in false writings. That is stupid. That is ridiculous. It didn't happen. If they did, they would be frauds, and they would not do that. To anyone familiar with ancient history, it will be obvious that Jasher places these events in a radically different time period than do conventional historians. We have no problem going against tradition, no doubt about that. However, a massive problem for this book is it cannot tell time. It even flies in its own face disagreeing with itself, and you're going to see that because we're going to show you specific examples in the next videos. To be sure, if Jasher be true, he's saying if, right? So, uh, he, he's not completely 100%, and he shouldn't be, uh, nor can he be. There needs to be a radical alteration in the conventional interpretation of ancient history, especially in the area of chronology. Well, Jubilees is the book of chronology, not this fraudulent Jasher. Uh, Yet, he admits he doesn't know uh, it to be true. I mean, that's right there. Uh, It's plain to see. This is not scripture and cannot be proven scripture by his own admission. He can't prove it. He's admitting he can't prove it. There is little of consequence and variance with the Bible, he says. (laughs) Now, that is an outright lie. Uh, 
We'll show you tons, and I mean tons, in the next videos. These are some chronological features that differ, or there are some, uh, indeed, but far more than that. It doesn't even agree with itself. <laughs> but these can usually be attributed to textual error. Okay, and the whole book of Modern Jasher is textual error, really. Uh, again, you'll see that it's going to be overwhelming with just the amount of occult influences and lies that are in the book. It is so overwhelming when you look at it this way. Usually the error will be resolved by reading on, meaning it disagrees with itself, and it does. Uh, and, and that's a problem. But, again, not one of its biggest problems. <laughs> its biggest problem is it doesn't have historicity, and it's not mentioned in Joshua nor Samuel. A latter entry will fall into harmony with the Bible text. Thus, it was wrong previously. <laughs> uh, so, that, that huh? <laughs> and uh, it disagrees with itself. That's what it's saying. So, remember that the ancient scrolls of this book were in poor condition. Whoa, 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 wait, wait, wait. Ancient, he says? Well, what, what do you call ancient? I know what I call ancient. When you're talking about the Bible, you're talking about Bible times, right? Well, no. He's speaking of basically the 1200 to 1500 AD era. Those are the ancient fragments he's talking about. That is ridiculous to call them ancient. They're not ancient. It's just like Nehemiah Gordon, who claims, oh, but the ancient rabbis, uh, who aren't ancient, and he doesn't quote any actual ancient ones that ever, ever use what he says is a V in ancient Hebrew because it doesn't exist in the language, nor Greek, nor Aramaic, nor Latin, nor Old French, Old German, or Old English. It's just not there. It's made up, it's infused by uh, the uh, Ashkenazi influx in the Renaissance era especially. So, no, he's speaking of 1200 or so here. That is not ancient. It is far after the Bible was written, and it's a fraud. When the book was printed in Hebrew in 1613, he says, well, no, not an original in Hebrew. No, there never was. They never found an original copy in Hebrew. Uh, there's no fragments, none, not, nothing in the Dead Sea Scrolls, nothing ancient whatsoever of this modern Jasher. It's new. It did not exist. It's a fraud. It is not unlikely that some numbers could get scrambled. Well, yeah, when liars write things, numbers definitely get scrambled. Uh, when idiots try to justify those liars, well, everything gets scrambled. No doubt about that. He goes on. There probably is no way that we can know that the biblical writer, now here he's going to be very honest, and this is good, uh, that he does that. Uh, that the biblical writer quoted from this book rather than the other way around. Actually, this is easy to know. It's very easy because you'd have to prove that this historically existed in order to claim such, and you can't. Modern Jasher has no historicity, thus it can only be the other way around. It copied Joshua, it copied Samuel, it copied Jubilees, it copied Genesis, it copied all kinds of occult influences that we're going to be showing you in the next videos. This fraud is borrowing from biblical texts, but not just, also the occult. And it's purporting to be scripture, even Torah, yet it is not and cannot be. It fails. When you see the many occult influences, you too will reject this book forever. Is it possible that this book was reverse engineered, he says? <laughs> I mean, what kind of fraud term is that? <laughs> Just to even ask that question says, well, <laughs> uh, this is a fraud. Perhaps that book of Jasher from the Amoraeum period, you know, the one that there's no actual evidence of, was compiled from rabbinic sources. That's a problem. Rabbis didn't write the book. Bible, especially not in the time of Moses. Well, how dumb can you be? Ah, so it means it's not Bible, but Pharisee or really Talmud, yet written about an era they cannot write about and call it scripture, period, in 1200 or even 300 to 600. Come on. Such that 
It is a kind of digest of rabbinic traditions or leaven, a lie. That's what it is. That's what the Bible calls that. Indeed, there is a great deal of commonality with accounts from other Midrashic sources. That's a problem for Jasher. Because the Bible doesn't agree with the Midrash. It doesn't agree with a lot of Pharisee nonsense. The rabbinic writings are not Bible. If this were found to be so, it would in no way diminish its value. (laughs) Yeah, right. Uh, Yes, it would. It would prove it's fraud. Now, you don't write what you claim to be Torah, because that's what the claim here is. Come on, this is the book of Yashar. This is the book of righteousness. This is Torah. It must be. So, you're going to claim that you have the book of Torah, yet you can't show it is historicity beyond 1,200 or so. You've got to be kidding me. That's called fraud. Thousands of years too late. Incomplete and utter fraud, not even remotely something that anyone could consider logically. Then to say it's Torah, that does take away from it being Torah. (laughs) If it's not, uh, it it either is or it isn't, right? So let's go to this, uh, his wrap-up in conclusion here, and uh, let's just determine, is modern Jasher, Scripture, have you seen anything? Anything that defines an actual, coherent, biblical history of Bible times? No, you haven't, have you? No. Now he's going to really prove how illiterate he is, because he can't even read what he's quoting, and wow, this is so blatant and obvious. Finally, consider how Josephus described the book of Jasher. Oh, wait a minute, Josephus in about 90 AD, so let's understand that. So we're talking first century, right? Wow, that would be monumental if he's talking about this modern Jasher, right? So what was he writing about? Well, he was writing about the book that Joshua and Samuel quoted, the same one that is the book of Jubilees, the book of Yashar. That's what he's talking about. He's not quoting the modern Jasher, nor endorsing it, and his description tells you so. Let's see. By the way, it doesn't exist, and he'll tell you this Yashar, or Jasher, mentioned as a specific purpose that fits, oops, Jubilees, not modern Jasher. Let's read, and we'll see what he's talking about here. He, Josephus, said, by this book, are to be understood certain records kept in some safe place on purpose. Check this out. Giving an account of what happened among the Hebrews from year to year. (laughs) You talk about funny. Oops. Uh, what, What is that? Have you read the book of Jubilees? Anybody who's followed this series knows Jubilees is laid out by dates from essentially year to year in Anno Mundi from the beginning of time all the way through the Exodus. It's all there. The dates are throughout the book. It even will tell you what Jubilee and what year within the Jubilee and blah, 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 blah. And we've seen that even in some of the things we've quoted from it. Wow. These dates accompany the book from the beginning to the end, from creation to the Exodus. Uh, it, 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 it's, it's called Jubilees. <laughs> That's what he's talking about. Josephus is talking about Jubilees. He's not talking about this modern concoction called Jasher. The mod and called Jasher, or the upright, on account of the fidelity of the annals. What does that even mean? There could be, and we'll cover that, don't worry. There could be no better description of the book that you see before you, okay? The bottom line is that you, as the reader, will have to answer the question of legitimacy for yourself. Well, he can't even answer his own question right there, and he can't even read. Whichever side of that issue you take, I think that you will be enlightened by exploring the issue and by reading the book. You mean the fraud? How much enlightenment is there in a fraud? None. If you feel as I do, that this book has the powerful credentials. What credentials? He hasn't given any credentials. There's no credentials whatsoever in regards to Bible. This is the Bible. We're talking about the Bible period, and he cannot connect it at all. He shows you nothing. 
to commend it as the biblical book of Jasher. No, it doesn't. He didn't prove that. He doesn't give you anything that proves that. You will now have in your hands an additional source to investigate when studying the Bible. You will also have much food for thought in regard to the issues of conventional chronology in ancient times. No, you won't, because this book screws that up. Modern Jasher fails the test of history. It has none. He gave you nothing. And this is his words. This is the guy defending this book. He's the one saying, this is why this is scripture. And there's nothing there. Nothing. Not in Bible times. It did not exist. Nor even close to it. The book of Yashar, mentioned in the Bible, is the book of Jubilees. Again, compared to this extremely weak bunch of really only Pharisee injections of this book of modern Jasher, uh, in comparison with Jubilees, it's clearly a fraud in history, and Jubilees vets is Torah. It cannot be the book Joshua would refer to because it wasn't written. The very earliest they can even try to assume, again, with very generic reference and no actual history, just a possible mention that isn't even firm, uh, is to 300 to 600 AD, and that also uh, is just too late. Then they say, you know, Josephus is... (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> is the reference. Josephus proves that the book was around in his time. Well, the book of Yashar was, yeah. And the book of Yashar, in fact, is Jubilees, was around in the time of Moses. And that's why it's quoted such by Joshua and Samuel. And you haven't proven that it's anywhere near that, not your modern Cheshire. But let's go back to the temple priests, this quote that we showed you before. The ones who actually keep Bible canon, they're the ones to watch, they're the ones to follow if you want to know what books were in the Bible. What fits Josephus here? Hmm. Well, not the modern Jasher. It certainly is not a timeline of the Bible. That's not what it's set as, especially not in comparison to Jubilees. He's talking about the Book of Times, where here specifically, That is even written in a format of year to year. Duh, that's Jubilees. Josephus is very obviously talking about Jubilees, which he quotes other times, by the way. What else did Josephus say, especially in geography? Josephus' geography, much of it comes from, or at least parts of it, comes from the book of Jubilees. So he was reading it even then. Um, So, Josephus meant Yashar, just as Joshua and Samuel did, and tells its Hebrew definition, the book of the upright, basically. And then he says, on account of, why is it the book of the upright? He even tells you why it's called the book of the upright. Because it's the exact determination of how to keep Torah in the time. This is exactly the same that the temple priests are saying about the same book. But he says, on account, so it's called the Book of the Upright, on account of the fidelity of the annals. What what is that? What does that mean, essentially? It is a text that is faithful or true to the calendar. Annals or annuals of sort, year after year, which he said before. Jubilees is very faithful throughout documenting dates in Anno Mundi. And even called what? What's its title? (laughs) Well, first, it's called the exact determination of their times of Torah. Uh, Hello. So, you know, Josephus is quoting that, really. Can you get more faithful than that? No. Where it is strictly defined, not just defined, strictly. And twice it says that. First, for the law of Moses, Torah. And then it's talking here. Wow. Wow. Now, that's faithful in time and even in title. The book of the divisions of the times into their jubilees and weeks. This is so very obvious. Is there anything to discuss here? Modern Jasher is not that book that's foolish and inept. It doesn't even agree with itself on dates, and its dates are wrong many times. We will cover some. In fact, you will see its dates are... Pharisee, very glaring, as well as you'll see many occult influences and Pharisee influences in this book. 
Jubilees is the book in which Josephus refers in 90 AD or so, the first century. Modern Jasher wasn't forged yet, and yes, I meant that term literally. It is a fraud. To suggest that Josephus was talking about that book, trying to give it the position of Jubilees, is utter fraud and nonsense. Again, they think they can get away with this because they censored Jubilees. So many people don't know that. So they just buy whatever is said in this introduction of this book. But when you restore Jubilees, as you see in this series, and even studying this book, Your eyes began to really open, and the veil is lifted indeed. Jasher leaves a gaping hole of nothing. Useless. It's a failure in every test. Many occult influences, and we're about to show you. No way. Let's deal with one last thing in this video. Those who push the modern Jasher as being quoted in the modern Bible who can't read and commit fraud, of course, also try to use Paul's words in 2 Timothy 3.8. Is this the modern Jasher being quoted here? Well, let's see. Paul knew the names of two of the sorcerers in the times of Moses that he faced. Janus and Jambres, who withstood Moses, basically. So, now, this is not in Genesis. Those names aren't there. They're just not there in the modern canon of Scripture. It mentions them as the sorcerers that Moses faced, but not by name. Uh, So, how did Paul know their names? I mean, that's pretty cool, but where did it come from? Did it come from the book of Jasher, the modern book of Jasher that wasn't even written when Paul lived? Uh, Well, uh, no. (laughs) It mentions them as the sorcerers, okay? Um, in Genesis, but we only see these names here in Paul in all of Scripture. So, where did it come from? Well, first, we are supposed to believe Paul read a book 1,200 years later and got it from that somehow. That's quite the miracle. Again, that is what the historicity would suggest because it has none and it can't be proven. You can't, you can't go back there because you have nothing to prove that it goes back there. Obviously, that would be ridiculous. So, how did Paul know these two names? Are there other sources he could have gotten them from? Tons! And I mean tons. Let's see. Well, there's no doubt these two names are mentioned in the modern Jasher. We wanted to show you that. 7927. There they are. Uh, They were actually Pharaoh's sons. Oh, wait a minute. So, these are historical characters likely recorded in other places. So, how about that? Maybe even secular history? Ah, indeed they were. We'll see. So, let's go to the first century. Not only did Paul know these names, well, so did the temple priest exiled to Qumran, at least one of the two. Let's see. Now, understand, these temple priests did not keep the book of modern Jasher. There's no such book. The book of Yashar, for them, is Jubilees, because that is the biblical Yashar. In the Damascus document dated over a century before Paul even, the temple priest mentioned Janus by name. Not Jambres, so just one of the two, but still, the point is, the name survived through history, and they got it from somewhere, and they didn't get it from the Bible. It's not there. So it obviously came from other historic sources. But they knew this from somewhere. And it wasn't from even Moses, who didn't record their names. He just didn't. He may not have even cared, for that matter, and didn't want to pump up their, their uh, you know, persona, for that matter. And I wouldn't blame him. Uh, this is not exactly monumental doctrine, by the way. And even if it ever did prove to come from there, it wouldn't prove anything. But there's no way it can. These are occult characters, which is why you will find them in occult lore, and why you will find them in Jasher that has much occult lore. Ah, we'll show you. We will prove that. So Paul knew just as the Levites before him knew. No surprise and no modern fraud from 1,200 years later needs to be injected to understand that. However, according to the Encyclopedia of the Bible, Bible Gateway, these names were very well recorded. Not by Moses, no, it's just not there, it's not in Torah, but in the occult and secular realm, and also in the Pharisee realm. Uh, 
Uh, This is very telling, by the way. These names are recorded in many places before this modern jasher was forged. So no surprise that we find them there. It clearly borrowed from them and not the other way around, just like everything else. We find this in the Jewish or Pharisee Targum of Jonathan. Uh, It's in the Talmud and even pagan historians like Pliny the Elder in the first century even, uh, Apuleius uh, in the second century. Remember, even the claim that the modern Jasher may have been around as early as 300 to 600 AD. Well, that's too late for this, so still it wouldn't be the origin. And Josephus was not quoting that book very clearly, but Jubilees very clearly, the Book of Times in his excerpt that we covered. This knowledge was around, especially since Paul retained and published it in the first century. Thus, no surprise that a modern fraud could pick it up and repeat it. Eusebius knew these names as well, and they even make the Gnostic Gospels, (laughs) the Gospel of Nicodemus. Uh, Other than Paul, the Bible has no mention because who really cares what their names really were? They are nobody. What this doesn't prove, however, is that the modern Jasher is anything but the knockoff in fraud that we know it to be. It has no historicity whatsoever. So let's review in the category of historicity. Jubilees passes as Torah, even. The temple priests included it as Bible canon in their library. It is the biblical Yashar, literally. Torah. However, the modern Jasher, not a fragment found there, nor referenced. There, Jubilees was defined as Torah and used as Torah. The modern Jasher was rejected and not kept. Moses wrote Jubilees as Torah according to Genesis even, and it is the origin of Joshua and Samuel. Um, The modern Jasher doesn't even have an author, whether alone a prophet. It would have to have been written by Moses, really, and it would have to be Torah. And that's a huge problem because Jasher oddly crosses over into the time of Joshua after Moses died yet back to creation and covers the era of Genesis and Jubilees and Torah. Those two are Torah. Modern Jasher fails. There is literal, literally uh, written history of Jubilees as Torah. None for Jasher whatsoever, not the modern concoction. And they're still trying to justify as if it is even a useful writing, whether alone Torah, to which it has no historicity, and they don't even make the claim, even though that's what they're really trying to say, they're not even making the connection, because they are incoherent. Jubilees, we prove, in the introduction of the book, is quoted by Messiah and the Apostles for significant doctrine, and again not found in Genesis or the rest of Torah, uh, thus must originate there, those quotes, and some of it very significant doctrine, like John 1, huge, massive ramifications, coming in origin from Jubilees. Jasher has nothing to even claim in that regard. Jubilees has continued throughout history as scripture and even Torah in the Ethiopian canon of what is referred to as the first church outside of the Middle East, and perhaps so. Historicity is a well-affirmed attribute for the book of Jubilees, which even vets as Yashar, mentioned in Joshua and Samuel and also quoted by Jacob or Moses, really, as Torah, in Genesis, even. We have a passing grade with ease. The modern Jasher is an epic fail, with nothing to even discuss in its defense as potential Torah, which it cannot be, but would have to, to make these claims. No case can be made, and we should all throw this book out. It is Pharisee, Nonsense, and you'll see next video, full of occult influences. Its history is completely Pharisee, and we were warned where that leads. Pharisees didn't write the Bible. Enough, Levin. 
The biblical Yashar is the book of Jubilees. The modern Jasher is a fraud. Now, in the next four videos, we are going to support this with a synopsis and commentary of sort of the modern uh, book of Jasher, and we will highlight 100 reasons why Jasher is nothing but an occult lie. The infusions are so many, we could cover more. Coming very soon. We hope everyone now realizes how powerful the Book of Jubilees is and remains Torah in every test. May we restore it to its rightful place in our studies and why waste time on the fraudulent failure of modern Jasher. We have over 365 videos on this channel, one for every day of the year now, many just as profound with some 50 or so in Tagalog for Filipinos and now six in Spanish to start. We also have been setting up subtitles for about 20 languages for most of our videos now. Don't forget to like and subscribe and click the bell for notifications of new uploads. Join our email list as YouTube fails to notify often, and we will notify you ourselves at thegodculture.com. Just fill in the pop-up there. We now have alternative platforms for videos on Rumble and Utreon with more coming. And our new podcast is also available for all of our videos as well. All links in the description box. And friend us on Facebook at The God Culture, space hyphen space, original. Any other is not ours. If you prefer an alternative, we now have Parlor link below. We now have five books published internationally being read in over a hundred countries. With our new release available, rest the 400 plus page case for Sabbath. We also have launched Ophir Philippines Coffee Table book overseas in the US, Canada, UK, many overseas markets on Amazon, and it's available in hardcover or softcover over there. Additionally, this week, uh, or a couple of weeks ago, we launched the Book of Jubilees, the Torah calendar, with color maps and interior, as so many have requested uh, that overseas as well. We already have that in color in the Philippines, but uh, overseas, it's also still available in black and white. You can pick uh, either. That's a lower price point. Uh, that, too, is available in hardcover or softcover for the color version, if you wish. All books, including Solomon's Treasure, are now free in ebook. Just go to OphirInstitute.com for all the links for your area for all of our books. More coming soon. Thank you for watching. Now, always remember prove all things for yourself. Yah bless to everyone.
The Book of Jubilees, the Torah calendar, named by the temple priests in Qumran, as the source of the exact determination of how to keep Torah's calendar in the Damascus document. Yes, they called it Torah and used it as such. This book renders the very first map of the world, the most ancient geography in all of history. Jubilee is also known as the Book of Division, as Noah partitions the entire earth to his three sons, finds the Garden of Eden in the Philippines, pinpoints the seat of Gog of Magog's power, demonstrates continental divides originate with Noah and much more. It is the second witness to Genesis and Torah and concurs. It tests as Torah and we encourage you to review this full text for yourself in the beginning of this book. It was the priests who were exiled from the temple who lived in Qumran, known in Bible times as Bethabara, where Messiah was baptized and John the Baptist of temple priestly caste lived and operated. As these were his fellow Levite priests exiled from the temple, who continued to keep scripture there, as well as operate a function, compound, modeled in part after the temple. This is the only historic library of precedence for the Old Testament canon in ancient history, yet explained away in willing ignorance, just as 2 Peter 3 warned. Based on the R.H. Charles translation from the Ethiopic, this book will enlighten and its revelation will rock your world. As all 50 chapters appear in this book with curated and edited margin notes, in large print Bible format, easy to read. This 288-page quality paperback has a high-resolution section of maps that represent the world's oldest map by Noah. Read it and test it for yourself, and you will likely find, as we have, this book is inspired, even canon, in history. Available free worldwide in ebook or purchase a print copy today on Shopee Philippines or Amazon internationally. Just go to bookofjubilees.org and the links are there for your area. We also offer bundle pricing with our other books in the Philippines. Our books are already expanding now, being read in 52 countries and more than half of the provinces in the Philippines. Join thousands who are finding this useful in their lives.